I wandered through a country town and I had time to spare, so I went into an antique shop to see what was in there. Old pumps and bikes and caro lamps, but nearly hidden by it all was a photo of a soldier boy, an Anzac, on the wall. Does the Anzac have a name, I asked, and the old man answered no. The ones that could have told us might have passed on long ago. The old man kept on talking, and according to his tale, this photo was unwanted junk from a clearance sale. I've asked around, the old man said, but no one knows his face. He's been on that wall for years. He deserves a better place because someone must have loved him. Seems a shame somehow. I nodded in agreement and I said, I'll take him now. Now my nameless digger's photo, well, it was a sorry sight. A cracked glass pane, a broken frame, I had to make it right. And to prize the photo free, I took great care just in case because only sticky paper held the cardboard back in place. And I peeled away the faded screed, and much to my surprise, two letters and a telegram appeared before my eyes. And the first revealed my digger's name, and regiment of course, John Matthew Francis Clancy, of Australia's own light horse. He was writing to his mother, and my interest now was keen, and it bore the date, September 7th, 1917. Dear Mum, I'm at Calasa Springs, not far from the Red Sea. They say it's in the Bible, just a billabong to me. My Cathy writes, I'm in her prayers, she's still my bride-to-be. You know I miss the two of you, you're all the world to me. Now Mum, you'll soon meet Bluey, because last month they shipped him out and I asked him to call on you when he's up and about. Oh, that Bluey is a larrikin. We all thought it funny when he lobbed a Turkish hand grenade into the CO's dunny. I told you how he dragged me wounded in from no man's land, and to stop the bleeding closed my wound with only his bare hand. Then he copped it at the front from some stray shrapnel blast. It was my turn to drag him in. I thought he wouldn't last. He woke up in hospital and nearly lost his mind. Cause out there, on the battlefield, he left one leg behind. Oh, he's in a bad way. He knows he'll ride no more. Like me, he loves a horse's back. He was a champ before. So please, Mum, can you take him in? He's been like my brother. And raised in a Queensland orphanage, he's never known a mother. It's truth, I miss Australia. And in my mind each day, I am a mountain cattleman on high plains far away. I'm mustering white-faced Herefords. No camel's humps in sight, and I waltz my Matilda by a campfire every night. Tell me, who is riding Billy? I heard the pub burnt down. You know, I'll always love you. And say, hooroo, to all in town. Now the second letter was written in a lady's hand, an answer to her soldier's son there in a foreign land. The copper plate was perfect and the pages neat and clean, and it bore the date November 3rd, 1917. Dear John, T'was hard enough to lose your dad without you at the war. We hope that you'd be home by now. Each day we miss you more. Your Cathy calls around a lot since you have been away to share with me her hopes and dreams for your great wedding day. Bluey has arrived. And what a godsend he has been. We talked and laughed for days about the things you've done and seen. He really is a comfort. Works hard around the farm, but I read the same hope in his eyes that you don't come to harm. McConnell kids rode Billy, but suddenly that changed. We had a violent lightning storm. It was very strange. Last Wednesday, just on midnight, not a single cloud in sight. It went on for several minutes. It gave us all a fright. It really spooked your Billy. He screamed and bucked and reared, and then he charged the slip rail fence, which by a foot he cleared. They brought him back next afternoon, but something's changed, I fear. It's like the time you brought him home when no one could get near. You calmed that big black brumby with his long and flowing mane. Now, horsebreakers fear the beast that only you can tame. That's why we need you home, son. Then the flow of ink went dry. The letter was unfinished, and I couldn't work out why until I started reading the letter number three, a yellow telegram delivering news of tragedy. Her son killed in action. Oh, what pain that must have been. And the same date as her letter. 
031117. So that note she never sent to John, she placed at one of three, all hid behind the photo's face, the face she longed to see. Now John's hometown's old timers, children when he went to war, would say no greater cattleman had left the town before. They knew his widowed mother well and with respect did tell how when she lost her only boy, she lost her mind as well. She couldn't face the awful truth. And to strangers she would speak, my boy Johnny's at the war, but he's coming home next week. They all remembered Bluey, how he stayed on to the end. A younger man with a wooden leg became her closest friend. He used to go and find her when she wandered old and weak and always softly say, yes, dear, John will be home next week. When she died, Bluey moved on to Queensland, some did say. I tried to find out where he went, but don't know to this day. And Cathy, well, she never wed. A spinster some found odd. She wouldn't step inside a church. She'd turned her back on God. John's mother left no will. I learned on my detective trail, and that explains the photo's journey to the clearance sale. Well, I continued digging because I wanted to know more and I found John's name with thousands in the records of the war and his last ride, a sacrifice that you will all acclaim. The light horse charge at Beersheba of everlasting fame. That last day in October back in 1917, at 4 p.m. this brave boy fell. That sad fact I did glean. That's when John's life was snuffed out, the record's crystal clear. But 4 p.m. in Beersheba is midnight over here. So as John's gallant spirit rose to cross the Great Divide, were those lightning bolts back home a signal from the other side? That's why Billy bolted, screaming as in pain. He knew he'd never feel his master on his back again. Was it just coincidence? Same time, same day, same date? Proof of numerology or just a quirk of fate? Somehow I think it's more than that. For I've heard wiser men acknowledge there are many things that go beyond our ken. Where craggy peaks guard secrets neath a dark sky torn asunder. Where hoofbeats are companions to the rolling waves of thunder. Where lightning cracks like 303s and ricochets again. Where howling, moaning gusts of wind sound just like dying men. Some cattlemen have sworn on lonely alpine track they've glimpsed a huge black stallion, a light horseman on his back. Sure, sceptics say a swirling cloud could form that apparition. I oh, know, my friends. You can't dismiss all this as superstition. The deserts of Beersheba, wind-swept Aussie mountain range, John Clancy rides forever. I don't find that strange. People see this photo and they'll often question me and I'll tell them a white lie and say he's family. Oh, you must be proud of him, they say. I tell them one and all. That's why he takes the pride of place. My Anzac on the wall.